This is the Levels Network. I am Justin Hordor, joined by the Triple OG, Widamu Mason. OG, it is round 16 preview time. And before we get in this show, I've got this one for us, mate. You'll enjoy this one. This one's from Ivan. Boys, another message, but an important one. I've just had a newborn baby born last week. Newborn baby born last week. I thought I was going to say baby boy, but it's baby born. Um, she cries all night and keeps us up. I listen to the potty all throughout the night, 4 a.m. today. Ooh. Can't say how thankful I am for your content and keeping me sane. Thanks, Ivan. Congratulations Congrats, on your new Ivan. baby. And thanks for listening to us. Yeah. Nice message, isn't it, mate? Soothing voices of Hoz and Mace. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're not listening to this tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Yeah. because you got some decent sleep. Mm. Uh, but thanks for the message, mate. Really appreciate the support. And congrats again on the baby. Uh, before we get into this, Mace, let's just get it out of the way. We don't have our BC dogs of the week, but we have our BC cans yeah. Of the year. I love them. They're available in Coles. I don't think a lot of people are aware of that, mate. You know, you can get them Chemist Warehouse. You can get them on the site. But when you're going for your shop- Go Coles and buy them. Go Coles. Get them in there. Uh, rather than getting- We won't name any other energy drinks because they're, yeah. the, they're not up to standards of BSC at the moment. No. So uh, it's nice and easy. Go for your shop exactly. once per week. Bang. Coles. Whole carton. Chuck it in there. Whole carton. I like it. Um, want to let everyone know and thank everyone who has subscribed. We went quickly from 25,000, mate, nearly at 26,000. So 1,000 off the back of the big 25K announcement. Yeah, nice. We're 25.9K, so we're only 100 off 26K, like I said. Get that after Origin 2, I reckon. We're nearly at 40,000 for your Instagram. 39.5. Get us to 40K over the weekend and tell all your mates and follow us and share all the stories. Like I said, Lukey does a good job of that. And he does that also for TikTok. We're at 69.7. I can't K. believe that. I still can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I only notice it when I'm training some youngsters down Latham yeah. and they're like 15, 16 and they're looking at me going, that's, what a, that's, a guy from, what that's Uncle that? OG. Yeah, it's, the, it's the unk over there. <laughs> <laughs> Big unk. Uh, we're nearly at 70,000, mate. So thank you for everyone that has left us a review as well on Apple and Spotify. I say it all the time. I don't say it just for the sake of it. You guys help build out our show. 100%. And we keep doing our thing for you at Levels because there's Levels to this shit, baby. So let's kick it off uh, with one of our replies. Uh, this one is from Barry Matthews. Hey, boys. I listened to your chat about Kiri being on the extended origin squad. I thought maybe Madge is preparing him to be an assistant coach next year. What do you think about that? Personally, I don't think Kiri will want to go from being in the NRL bubble, as we call it, yep. to going straight into New South Wales assistant coaching. Mm. I don't think that's Madge's idea. This is Madge's first year. He's probably just trying to get a little bit of experience around the halves because, and he's got a great relationship, 10-year relationship with Kiri. Yep. With his South Premiership over there, um, people forget about that age. Eh? Yeah, so Kes people, was part yeah. of the 2014 yeah. five eight, and um, he was a youngster. And he, Madge would have been the coach when he was a young and up and coming, aspiring young player. And what happened when Madge left? Yeah. Kes left a, Kes a year left or so. Well. After. So they got a good relationship. Yeah. So I think he's just looking after Kes there, and he knows it's his last year, and this is his last ride. Do they? Does the eight? Do the twentieth man get a little bonus? Pretty you know? sure you do. That'd be you're, nice. not, you're not going in there for nothing, right? Be, and I be, think, you know, just having his experience around because, yeah. you know, what that uh, – he's and he's about 30. He's 31. Uh, he'd be around 31. So he's one of the oldest 30, in the squad. So, it's a, yeah, he's around my buy, brother's age, I think. Can't buy experience. Don't, yeah. be, don't sleep on, don't sleep on um, Kez's uh, resume as well. He can put it up with the best of them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, man, man to man like he's – and tick for tick, he's done everything in the game, everything possible. So Three premierships, a Clive Churchill. Yeah, um, like he's the dominant, only, man. The only box he really hasn't ticked is – is really origin, right? Yeah. Uh, did he play for Australia? He, he's played for Australia. Yeah. Yeah, 2017. And uh, I know- 18, I know. 19. I think he was like really embedded in that until he got injured. Yeah. So he was he was 5'8 before money, hit the scene but a little bit later, took his job. And then the COVID break sort yeah, ACL. of- ACL. In, international footy and then, yeah, yeah, ACL as well. Yeah. Um, I will say I spent a bit of time with Kiri over the years uh, through the relationship, like content and- mm. One of the better minds, the 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 Sonia data that he's yeah, got up in his he's head. He's very smart, very and respectful, very respectful. Um, some of the information that he's given me that Robbo has passed on mm. to him and um, Cooper Cronk as well. You can tell, like we've sat together, we've done some golf content before. Yeah. Sat together and had a beer for about an hour yeah. and a half, and I just talk him footy, and he's one of the the better. Footy, I thought footy I remember minds. playing him in 2014. I was 34 years old playing for Newcastle, play against South. That's their premiership winning year. Yep. And after I remember just you know little things, like this, he comes out gets privileged privilege playing against your big man. Yeah, love I was that. like, oh, I respect that sort of shit. He didn't have to. He's yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like little things like, like I still remember that. 
Yeah. You know, I don't, so I've always held him in high regard. And ever since then, he's always been a good – and his career's gone like that. So I, th- I, I, I understand why Madge has put him in there. I just said, look – I just think it would be better if you put a younger kid in there because Kiri's done it all. Mm. But he's obviously holds him in such high regard and he's held in such high regard with the players. So having him in there is invaluable. You know what? Now that I think about it, you're exactly right. Both uh, states have done what's exactly right for their states. Yep. Billy's won two uh, series now back to back, so it's about blood in youngsters. He's got experience. He doesn't need yeah, the experience. We don't. And with New South Wales – they haven't won in a while. So what do they need? They need a steady head, someone that's going to communicate well, help the team get a get a win. Yeah. And that's all that matters. It's not about blood in the next. It's about right now they need to win. Yep. And I think both states have done the right yep. job with who 100%. they've had, gotten their top 20. Um, all right, this one's from Cameron Brady. And these are the last two around state of origin selections before we chat about it properly on Monday and break it down. Uh, yo, boys, personally love the Watson selection and thought Birdo should have been – on the bench for game one. Any insight into what a Mr. Fix-It style training and prep looks like for Origin? Would Connor be playing and training, sorry, would Connor be training for different times at different positions for a percentage of the week? Mace, uh, chair boys, L1 from day one. Couple of questions off the back of that. Was Wingy a part of? Was Wingy probably your Mister Fix It during was, yeah. your time for yeah. the majority? Was there any other Mister Kirk Gidley? No, Kirk Gidley and um, Wingy. Yeah, that and and, and would they train at how? Uh, so both were brought in to probably play majority hooker, but did they play different positions all throughout training? Well, Danny as well? Badiris was the nine and our captain, right? Yep. So he had hardly ever hardly ever a break. He'd come off maybe he'd get 30, 30, 30 minutes in maybe. Yeah, you know, Wingy could be sitting on the bench for the whole half or Gids and just see when that right time is. When we need that just to speed the ruck up, right? Because you gotta understand back then they had guys like Petro, Webkey, big bodies, right? So if we blast the ruck, someone's gonna get tired. Mm. It just depends who gets majority of the ball, right? Yep. It could be we get majority of the ball, that means Bedsy can stay out there longer. Yes. Okay. You know, but if we're not, if we're on the back foot, we need a spark, bang, get wingy or get gids on, can change the game. So, but during the week, they just slip in anywhere. Cause everyone's just like so smooth and like really good with what they're doing and they know what their job is so well. All right, have a rest. You know, the nine, have a rest, Robson. But Reb- Robson might want a lot of reps because he's never played there that long, right? He might want more reps. So he could come on in at 5'8 or half or whatever, just like whoever. Connor? Yeah, Connor. Yep. But he needs the reps. Yep. You know, so like a Robson who's played three or four games understands Origin now. I think, you know, he's not, a, he's not a, I'm not going to say he's an Origin player, but. I don't think he's going to get overawed by the situation. So Connor could come in there or he could come in at lock, give Cam Murray a rest. You yeah. know, Cam Murray's done – there's a lot of Ks in, the, in those legs. He comes – I think he'd be mainly coming on at the lock position. And I think, I think so they too. could ro- – they'd leave Robson in there for the whole time and then Connor – they'll just speed the ruck up like that. Robson might even drop back into 13. Who knows how – who knows how it's going to happen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I think – but he'd just be what coming on in the middle, at- just in the middle and just getting – and speeding the ruck up. Is he the fix for six, seven as yeah. well? And then also, do you think he's uh, versatile enough to play centers if one of the centers go down? Yeah, and then you could. obviously move a center. Maybe yeah. Stephen Crichton is the versatile player to go to the wing. Yep. That's so the thing. So he, he does he, a bit of a few, the This would be all on Connor Watson, right? Yeah. If he's like, they'll be saying, look, you're our Mr. Fix It. You're our, you're our swing man. Go do whatever you need to do mm. to prep yourself. Can you play in the centers? Can you defend in the centers? Like he'll be he'll be just sitting around when they're doing left on rights and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let me get. Can I get a rep here, Critter? Can I get a rep here, uh, Trell? Have a break. You know, swap in and out because these guys are ready to roll, man. You know, they're yeah. ready to roll. They're prepped their best. So it's just about just taking a few reps here and there, a few reps here and there. Latrell might want a lot more reps because he's been played on the uh, left center for a while. I don't think Latrell move. No, I'm just saying, but I'm like yeah. he. I don't think he'd want to step out of training. Because he would just want more reps, more reps. Yeah, but you know, like, so just say if Connor Connor was to move to position, yeah. I think it would be wherever Critter was defending, and Critter would yes, be the guy. Yes, I don't think. But just say if Latrell yeah. gets injured, that's what we're saying. Like, it just oh, if he, if he gets gotcha. Latrell gets injured, let's gotcha. just say in a perfect world, no one does. But yep. like, you just want to come in and tick all the boxes, right? Because okay. he's not he'd be doing everything bar the wing spot. Yeah, and front row. Yeah, because then that Critter would move. Yes, because everything else he can he can everything's movable. Yep, but. Just say if he has to go in there. Look at Cookie. Look what happened. Yeah. Cookie played left center. Did he prep for that? No. He just had to make his had to do his best. You know what I mean? So he's just going to tick all the boxes. You got a whole week to do it. Get a lot of reps in. Yeah. But I think it will be mainly in the middle. Swapping with Robson. Swapping with Cam Murray. Speeding the ruck up. Just getting the balls and just yeah, just fucking speeding that ruck up and just playing with some energy. That's all we want him. That's all okay. we want him for. 
All right, on the flip side, this one's from Mike Parker. Uh, this is the other Mr. Fix-It for the other side. Uh, boys, after Billy was praised for having Cobb on the bench for the first game, why didn't he go a like-for-like like replacement to do the same? Sure, Capewell can cover centres and back row, but would there be another player to match what Cobbo could bring? Uh, my first question is, Cobbo, I'm hearing uh, the rhetoric that Billy has been uh, pushing about Cobbo is that he's carrying an injury Injured. and he's been needled up. Do you think there's more to it with Cobbo? Do you think there's – I, there's there's a part of me it just it just doesn't feel right. It feels like he they, they might have used this as a uh, as a reason that they weren't overly for whatever reason whatever it may be. I haven't broken down the game enough to to see because like I said, Cobb was a fucking beast in game one. He was. Do you think Billy's concerned that it was twenty to ten for a long time and there were some parts of for me I think there was parts of the game where like. We score, was, if Lenu scores or something like that, the game changes. The game changes and he, he might have looked at certain parts of the game and going, mm. I, I have a feeling Co- Cobo was dropped, eh? That's my, that's my gut yeah. feeling. I've got I like – let's just listen to people, yeah. especially when you hear Queenslanders talk. Uh, everyone sort of just ums and ahs and doesn't really give an answer. I could be completely wrong, yeah. but that's just my gut feeling. I believe that, Billy on this yeah, okay. because I think if he's getting needled up and as a 22-year-old, he's got another 10 years at, the, at his peak in the game. And right. Billy, if Billy's looking after him, and I think Billy strikes me as the type of coach that cares about his players. Yeah, And he'd be looking – he'd have a one-on-one with Cobbo and goes, how's your body? And yeah. Cobb's like – uh, it's fucking battered. 50-50. Yeah, and 50, I think Cobbo would be honest out. with himself as well. All right, I'll give you a rest for game two, come back game three. All right. I sweet. think, And then, and then you'll you'll get your question answered then where Cobbo is in game three. Yeah, we'll get the answer We'll get the three. answer. We so if he win. doesn't come in and you've got Kurt Capewell, I'm like, Kurt Capewell's had one week back. Mm. Don't think it's 2020 when he could he matched in the centres. He was a lot lighter and he was a lot a lot younger and a bit more agile. Mm-hmm. He's had a couple of knocks since then and he a few has. injuries, right? Yep. So if, he, if they think he's that swing man who can just go on the centres and Mark Luttrell – or Critter, or someone like that. He could do a job, mm. but he ain't going to do the job that he did three years ago yeah. when Wayne was the coach. On the game plan for it, if Capewell was to come on, there's no way they're putting him across Latrell, I don't think. Well, I'm just saying, if, they, if they, I'm just saying for, through injury, he's the swing guy. Someone comes across, or just say somehow he happens to play right centre. Yeah. He did that in fucking in that series where they won. I know. But I know he, that, but just I'm just saying he can. He can do it. But I'm like, that's not the same player as three years ago. Yeah. I so I'm, I agree with you. Yeah. I don't think he can do it. So I think yeah. if Capewell comes on, they flip hammer to the other side. Yeah, of course. But I'm just saying, why wouldn't you put gags there if you're trying to think along the lines oh, of, okay. of a Cobo slash like like. fullback, winger, centre? Gags can play all those positions. Do you reckon he can play back row and At a high level. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. I mean, if so, if you had to do put gags in the back row, I think he could do a job. Yeah, for sure he would. For sure. You. you know, he's a fucking gun. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been playing well. I'd be, I would be more scared if Gags is on the bench than Capewell. Okay. I'll be like, fuck, now they've got another dude who's just as capable as Cobbo and he's one of those guys. Now, like Capewell's – he's a good player. Mm. But it, as I said, he's been battered for a couple of years now. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I'm Even like, at the Broncos. And if he comes on, if he comes on, you're like, okay, well, you're not – there's no fear factor there. We're, it, co- it, we're Gags. When a dude who's won the Wally Lewis medal, mm. a guy who's won series, he gets a fucking Maroon jersey on, he turns into a fucking Superman. Yeah. And it's taken, been taken away from him for been, a year yep. too as well. I don't uh, want gags in that team. Is there anyone else that could have filled that? Uh, no, only gags. Role? Only gags who can be like all those players and tried and tested at all positions in club level and yep. origin. Right. So that's why I was surprised gags is 18th man. I'm like, all right. Well, who Thank knows? Thank you. 18th man. 18th Fle- man can slide in. Felice played last game, so he's this all chance that you Maybe might, he's like, he's getting gags. Capewell just to t- cop a hit. <laughs> And uh, get gags on. <laughs> is Billy that he's, he, is he that manipulating? Well, we always say that he's uh, proactive, not reactive. Yes. Maybe he's thinking about Go all there, the – Go one for the team. He's sort of a Capes, thousand. Take well. one for the team, mate. We need <laughs> – All right. This one is from Salty Beats. Um, I ran into this guy. He's Salty big Beats, fan. Yeah. yeah. Big fan of us, right? I follow him on Instagram. Yeah, he's um, he always messages on Instagram. Huge fan. Hey, hey, boys. Love to listen and been now one since day one. Kia ora, horo. I'm the degenerate that came up and said, hey, when I was DJing at the Bolter and Mick Fanning charity golf day. Okay, been a rugby league purist and tragic all my life. I know growing up, a lot of team members in our rep teams would play outside sports to enhance certain qualities and skills, making them a more rounded player. So question for both of you guys, coming through the grades or as a teen, did you do such a thing? Uh, also, is there any alternate sports you'd recommend for kids coming through the grades? Basketball. Different skills of a particular game. Basketball. you got to have that. It's great for your grip strength. I remember coming through, I was playing basketball, rugby union, 
a little bit of cricket, whatever our par- whatever the parents could afford. Mate, yeah. Rugby league was free. Yeah. That's why we played it. Cricket was money, so I couldn't play it. Yeah. He played it at school. Expensive. So every, everything was expensive. Hey, try growing up in Toronto West in a commission house with fucking eight kids. You're not getting <laughs> shit. <laughs> You play a fucking free game and yeah. do your best. But if, basketball is if, free too. If you can play a sport with just a ball, yeah, and that's all you need. That's all you need. You got a hoop down at the park. Yep, you're a gun. <laughs> yeah, and then so I was massive into basketball from about twelve to like seventeen. And then I had to stop playing because I got I was contracted and stuff like that. So, yep. but really good for your grip strength and just that little bit of footwork, right? That's that rule of late footwork that I try and teach these young kids. Mm. Big, strong, fast. Got a little bit of late footwork when you're crossing over all that sort of stuff. Your legs are doing that sort of. Your legs are doing that on purpose, right? Yep. Naturally. So if you can master those sort of things, your grip strength is important for offloads. And Look, Anthony Tupo, yep. one of the fucking strongest grip strengths of all time. His hands aren't massive. Try and get the ball off him. Mm. Unbelievable. Gun basketball you know, the player. the game we used to play. Yeah. Like that. You hold no one can beat him. <laughs> no one can beat him. I've got one player that can oh, beat him. God. From my example, and I agree Who? with you 100%. I'm yeah. going to double down on it. Um, growing up, I went to school with Filetti Matteo. Saw big Filetti a couple of weeks ago. He did. He messaged me. Love it. He yeah. Mess- yeah, I love Filetti, man. Love him. Um, me and Filetti went to high school together at Westfield Sports, and we were both there for rugby league, obviously. But Filetti used to play basketball all the yeah. time at lunch. Love and recess with the uh, Filipino boys and, and the basketballers yeah. at our school. And it translated so much to footy. Like he said, not only the Is grip that-, that he had like – Flitty had the best grip of all time. Now he had big mitts and nah, and but it's not that. It's not, it's, yeah, his hands as big as mine, but his grip is like the crazy. The control, bro. basketball, the handles, but also like the the little shake and yes. bakes, the little handles, all that stuff. Flitty's even though Flitty had a mad offload, his footwork was just silky for a big back row. Like if you can hit and spin, if you can do a spin move in in basketball, you hit and spin naturally. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Bang, so bang. like I used to like little things like that. I used to hone my craft in in basketball and then try and do it in rugby league. So you're moving people around, spinning both ways. Like I like I start to I, when I'm training these younger kids, like 15, 16, Can you can you spin? Mm. Fucking Bit legs. Awkward, like I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell is this? Yeah. And it's like, like when I t- when I show them, they're like, how are you fucking doing that? It's just natural for us right yeah. now, right? But like you try and do that, like they have no idea. I said, do you play basketball? No. You yeah. give them basketball, they fucking drop it. Yeah. You know who played basketball coming through the grades as well? Joseph Swali. Like I was a, tell, a gun basketballer. So, again, he's got that big grip. He's good in the air. Yeah. Um, like you said, the movements in and around, highly recommend it. Do you remember I, playing with Man- when we were playing at Manly? Yeah. Remember I used to school Filetti, man. Yeah. Remember? I used to, <laughs> I used to remember, I don't know about remember that. Remember I dunked on him? I like, just fucking bang. I don't know if I remember Shut up, Filetti. I don't know if I remember yeah, that one, Yeah, he remembers. <laughs> he remembers. Phil remembers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I wish I, I didn't play it as a kid and yeah. then I got I really enjoyed it yeah, watching I, it and then I got into a little bit later in life yeah. I wish I did it when so I was five younger. years like from 12, 12, to, yeah, 12 to about 16, 17 I was like every day every yeah. single day loved it I would it just made me a better like, I reckon it made me a better rugby league player I would have been one of those young kids where you were trying to teach a hit yeah. and spin yeah. at like 18 and <laughs> I, would have, I would have been like <laughs> had no idea <laughs> Um, all right, mate, let's get into the main topics. And it has been on this week, a little Ooh. bit of origin chat, which has been good. Um, it started off basically, it's all to do with the wild shit. It's still dragging on. It's dragged all the way into origin too. Um, Michael Morgawai was interviewed and he talked about people and he didn't uh, verify who he's talking about. Oh, he didn't name Billy. What he he was didn't talking name about Billy. Oh, wow. But he goes, you can. You, he goes, basically, those who live in glass houses. Mm. Um, they go. This is off the back of a Nat, what Nate Miles said. Uh, they clearly had a target on him, and it didn't turn out right. The officials had no other option, really. Um, and then off the back of that, Madge was asked about it, and Madge goes, "You've got to make sure that you don't live in glass houses. That's all I'll say." And then he. Di- the, the reporter, I think it might have been James Super, asked him to elaborate. He goes, I'm not going to talk on names, but it was – don't think it was aimed at Nate and then it was perceived to be aimed at Billy. Eh. And then Paul Reedy tried to ask him on 360 and just got like brushed. Smashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I thought was, was hilarious. Um, so on that, did you see the 360 uh, clip? Um, like Billy pretended like he didn't know what Reedy – was talking about but for sure uh, he's He's seen it um but i love the chat yeah this is good we haven't seen enough of this i I feel like for a while more personal man because freddie and uh billy have been doing channel nine and the footy show there really hasn't because the players aren't going to do it anymore there's not there's not a war of words that used to happen from yesteryear right no one wants to give anyone any ammunition so in a way 
you sort of need a little bit from the coaches. Yeah. Madge has sparked it now. He's got a relationship with Billy, but fuck it. He doesn't have to see Billy no. at, at the footy show every Sunday. So he's had a little stab. Billy's pretending that he doesn't hear the stab. And yeah. now we've got- and everyone's just sort of like trying to make their own narrative on what's going on. MG was on there. Yeah. I've seen the Hello Sports. They had a really good clip of Bill. That yes. was fucking hilarious. Because it's true. Yes. Right? Because I played against Billy, man. Like, they changed rules for that guy. Mm. And I'm looking at that interview, and I'm like, did, when Billy said those comments against with Walsh, I was like, did Bill forget that he played rugby league for, like, 16, 17 years mm. and was like, he was he, he was an animal, man. He's he was crumb. one of the greatest players, but yeah. he had some shit in him, man. He had some dog, and not dog, he like, fucking, he had some dog. He had some shit yeah, in him. Some like, some of him. these, like, the highlights that they've been putting up, I'm like, Oh, yeah. Fuck, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I remember it. I remember that. I'm like, oh, shit. Do you reckon it's masked by his greatness that we sort of forget? Like him and Kim and Cam. I think he forgot. I think he forgot what he did back in the day. Yeah. I was like, he's doing an interview thinking, that he, I've never played this game before. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm not the one who karate kicked uh, the ball, Clemmer in the head. Yeah. I'm not the guy who like he shoulder, the shoulder charge, shoulder that. charge or slid in with his legs and all those sort of things that change the game because he, he, he would- He changed the rules. He changed the rules. Yeah, yeah changed the rules of yeah. the game, right? Yeah. Because because there was a grey area there where there wasn't like he was sliding. In fullbacks weren't the doing time. that. Yeah, but there was no rules that say you can't do that. Nah, it was legal. So he's playing by the rules. Yeah, where you know we've been jumping up. He was so he was sick of people. The reason why he started kicking out because he was sick of people coming in and taking his legs out. That's fair, and that's fair. Yeah. Oh, fair, fair play to fullbacks, mate. Yep. They cop a barrage, especially back there. There was no protecting of kick of uh, of catches as well. You yep. come down on Bill, you're trying to kill him. Yes, and he, he the next minute like you. Get a karate kick in the head. You're not chasing as hard. Yeah, you'll you back off. Up. You'll let him. You'll let, you'll let him land. Yeah, you know. So everything that he did was was the counter, rules. Counter punching. It's a counter punch. Yeah. yeah. Except for but, kicking people when they're trying to score. That's yeah. just. I, mean, I looked at that. And went. Oh come on, Bill. That's but a bit, that was just that was a bit rough. That that was the competitive side of him as yeah. well. Like I can understand it. They again. show that shoulder charge. I'm like, oh, I'm happy with that. I like the shoulder charge. I like charge. the shoulder charge. I, reckon, I'm like, I think fullbacks are the only ones that should be allowed the shoulder charge. Yep. Because you're going against that's a that's a different beast. Those wingers and all that kind of stuff. I want my fullbacks to stop tries in that fashion. The so, kicking, I'm glad they got rid of that because yeah, it's too dangerous. Yeah, I can understand what Billy was thinking during that times yeah. because he was such a dog. He wanted yeah. to stop every single try he could. Yeah. So if you get your foot underneath, it's just like your foot probably gets there quicker than what your hands, yeah. and then you take away the risk of injury for him yeah. diving. So they got rid of that rule. I'm fine with that. I wish they still had the Even shoulder Bill, bar rule. We used to chase Bill, just say, get him. And he'd try and he'd do that leg. He'd kick his legs out with an elbow. So yep. if you're on the other side, you're copping stray elbows in the head. When he's getting up to play and the ball. Yeah. Bang. He'd hit, yeah. Little things like that. Yep. And he'd try and he'd, he'd get a leg release out. If you've got his, um, if you've got his uh, upper, upper body, right, mm. his head's there, he'd have a leg, he'd hip. slip out and go crack. Hip escape. Hip escape, mate, yep. with an elbow. Because your because your head yeah. your head is over his right so he's escaping people don't understand at home he's escaping out that way with an elbow that way so you cop it straight in the back of the head and yeah. you fucking just let go yeah. once you get hit in the head <laughs> he was just so good and that trainer down there that's yeah. why it was the Melbourne system yeah, right it's that yeah fucking they're all just ahead of the game man um so back to how this all started right anyway he forgot that he actually played well <laughs> he actually to be this is to be clear right so what he did was. For after Origin and then maybe immediately after, he didn't say anything, right? He didn't want to speak on the incident. He could just show visibly that he was frustrated with it. It wasn't until a couple of days later that I think maybe yeah. it might have been on the footy show that he talked about, do I want parents watching this sort of stuff? He looked bigger picture. Is that what you wanted to say, Lukey? Is that where everyone's getting fired up about? Yes. Yeah, that comment, Lukey. So basically so- from that comment, then everyone was like, whoa, whoa, whoa chill, Bill. Like – you're a dog, but you're also a bit of a dog. I just think Bill was in that position where he was he's he's a father, he's a he's an older role model, he's looking for the the bigger picture of what that could look like. Yeah. That's what I understand. And he just sort of like actually forgot that he fucking played the game at a highest level and he was like a proper dog. Yeah. And he did some dirty shit, right? Yeah. So he just totally forgot, but he was thinking bigger picture, coach, father. New game. Do you want, yeah, a whole new game. Do yeah. we want that look? New the standards. Rip, the ripple effect. You know what I mean? Uh, kids, why would parents – and I'm looking at that. Well, I look at that as well. I'm like, why would kids want to – Play that game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like two of our glamour boys and post up boys just killing each other. Mm. But you gotta like as I said, this dog this 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 game's not for everyone, right? But also if I'm a parent and my young fella is watching the game with me, I'm so I'm not like endorsing the tackle, but I'm like 
That's Origin, that's baby. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, that's what he gets. I Arch, that's what's you, up. You, you, you want some of that you smoke? Don't want, you want you, some of that smoke? You don't play. <laughs> you don't want it? Don't play. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to see Reese Walsh knocked out in that fashion for sure. Nah, man. But you're like, he, he, hey, he just missed. He slipped. Get, get your targets right next to him. Don't time. slip, I'll don't say. Slip, man. I'll <laughs> hey, you want to play this game? Don't, don't get slip. caught slipping. Don't slip. Get <laughs> fucking studs in your boots. No. Um, so, 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 uh, hopefully we can end it right now. And like Bill said, Bill was talking from the heart, right? He was not talking about his career. He's talking about the bigger picture. So everyone, obviously it's Origin, amplified by 3,000. Let's just start little narratives and all that sort of shit and pick on Bill's career. Bill had a great career. He was one of the fucking best players of all time. And also you brought up a great point before the podcast with Billy. Do you think tactically he's trying to do something? Well, he's trying to protect his players. Yeah. And that, that's what Madge is doing. Madge is taking a book, yeah. a leaf out of the old Wayne Bennett book, and just taking pressure off Latrell. Mm. Latrell ain't got anything this week, apart mm. from we'll get to the Spencer stuff and we'll, yep. we'll dissect that a little bit. Yep. But Madge has just gone, you know what? The players aren't saying shit. I need to take some heat off Latrell and everything about it, the Spencer Lane new, all this sort of bullshit. I'll say something just to deflect and then I'll I'll cop everything. And then players galvanise going, yeah, fuck yeah, the coach is fucking – he's taking one for us. We just have to concentrate on football, get down to Melbourne – get the win, and then we can talk – then we can relax a little bit, right? But I think Madge has done that on purpose because mm. Madge ain't like that. He don't say shit like that. He, don't, yeah. he doesn't do he's anything. He's got a good relationship with Billy He's too. got a great relationship with yeah. Billy. So, like, he's just fr thrown that out there mm. and let everybody fucking just go fight for whatever you think that he's saying because he didn't name names. He didn't do anything. Mm. He's very methodical with shit. Like, he's a smart human, mm. and right. he's deflected, and I think he's done that because Wayne does that to all his players. On the flip side, no one's talked about – I haven't heard f shit from Reese Walsh all week. Nothing. So Billy, yep. he's, he's he's done. Right so by the, his the team coaches as well. are just gone. We'll go. We'll butt heads all week. Yeah. And then the players, the players just have just to concentrate that. on their fucking play. That's it. Yep. And I love that from those coaches. And don't think for a second that they're not doing that. Mm. Coaches do that because they protect their players. Mm. Smart. But Luke just said um, that Walshy uh, said that Suwali reached out. Exactly. So there's no, there's nothing in the media it's for that. A, it's, an, it's an origin they, they, game, man. Like it's an origin game. Like yeah, that's all that's I can say. The, that's to our point, right? Because there's nothing that you can build from that, mm. the media needs something. They need something. So Bill, they've latched onto Billy look and Madge. This, look at this paper. It's just nonstop <laughs> Billy. It's nonstop Madge. Like, I don't even read these fucking papers, but like, it's all over your Instagram. It's all everywhere. You know what I mean? You can't get away from it because mm. this is how this is what Origin does. It brings out the fucking best and worst in people. Everyone's got it. Like, have a look at it. Uh, like, every time we talk about Origin now, last year, everyone's got an opinion. Mm. Everyone's so fucking diehard Queensland. They get real passionate and personal. I'm like, Dude, it's just, it's just my opinion, mate. Relax. You can have yours. All right. Well, uh, talking about the Latrell mm. uh, noise or, or lack of noise. Yeah, it's good. Um, I completely forgot about this, right? Yeah. At the start of the year, obviously, with the Lin Yu and Ezra Mam drama, there was Latrell. Uh, Mitchell has told the Daily Telegraph, we've put it behind us, the NRL has dealt with it, and we've got to move on. With regards to his um, disagreement with what happened with Spencer Lin Yu at the start of the year, uh, I've got a job to do. Me and him will talk and just let bygones be got bygones. The lessons have been learned, and we'll go from there. Spencer always come, uh, also came out, and basically I'm paraphrasing him now and said he's got his back. Uh, once we step over that line, we bleed blue and we're all together. Uh, I've got a question. I've got a couple of questions and I think this will help us build into this topic a little bit better. Um, this is from the A-Team Chief. Hey, lads, do you think Madge had a chat to both Latrell and Spencer about possible tensions in the camp after Mitchell come out in defense of Ezra at the start of the year? I know the professionals, but say the match gets into the deep trances and you need to know you've got your Blues brothers. Do you think they would spill blood for each other? 100%. I don't even, I don't even think they, it, anything needed to be said. As soon as you come into camp, you've got that blue jersey on. That's a fucking brotherhood. That's a bond forever. Mm. You do not need to even fucking at, uh, have an interview with the Telegraph or anything. No, nothing needs to be said. If you're still carrying that fucking animosity and bad blood, like that's on you. Mm. It doesn't need to be said. But obviously, the media are going to bring that sort of shit up. Of but course, they, in this but they should have brought that shit up. Well, it's Nico Hines. Nico Hines said a lot of shit at the start of the year. True. Nico played in game one. Why wasn't Spencer and, and, and Nico breaking bread? Great but because point. it's fucking Latrell, and that's a great point from our man Lukey Stowe. Yep. He brought that up. That's the first thing he thought of. I'm like. Well, why isn't – like, Nico getting grilled with these questions. Why is, why is Latrell? Why is mm. Latrell? Because it's Latrell. Mm. Like, Nico was just as loud yeah, and supportive. proud yep. and supportive as fucking – as Latrell, but it's Latrell. So, actually, uh, Latrell, Latrell gets all these fucking questions. Like, he don't give a fuck. Like, it's done. Like, Latrell has that mentality. So does Spencer. Mm. Then you've got, then, then you got to ask Spencer all these hard questions. And he's like, bro, like, oh, fuck, you got that jersey on. I got your back. He's like that. 
Yeah, why didn't they ask Spencer about Nico and why yeah. is Nico not about Spencer? Like, why didn't that come up? Yeah, because it's Luttrell. Luttrell, different A. Eh? Gets yeah. fucking views. Yeah, funny one. And this one, uh, this is a good question as well. Uh, hey, gents, how do you think Luttrell and Spencer's chat went when they got into the camp yesterday? Like uh, brothers, man. Like uh, May said, obviously they had their disagreements at the start of the year, but so many times over the years you've seen guys that hated each other at club level and then come together. So have you ever been Fuck, a in million teams times. or squads with two blokes that had a big falling out or a disagreement? In the media, and probably not to this extent because this is very. Uh, have you had players, and you don't have to name Definitely them? Definitely not in the media, but like I've had beef with guys on the field and yes. shit. Like, and then we come into Origin camp, so like, oh. yeah, here we go. We're we're in the same team. It's not it's not even said. Yeah. I don't need, you don't have to say anything because what's fucking stays on the field. What happened on the field stays on the field. When you get into Australian camps, when you get into New South Wales camps. You're on the same team. You're brothers, like straight away. There's no, I don't, you just don't care. I reckon if they didn't ask Latrell these questions or Spencer, mm. it wouldn't have been said. They mm. might, they wouldn't even have said anything to each other unless they, it was so weird, you'd have to say it. Maybe it was. I, I think it probably would have had to have been, just because this day and age, you'd have, would have to address it. I've got two stories involving chalk. And uh, I want you to, t- to tell me about Chucky what, Mel? You, when Chucky was going, he was basically him, Gal, maybe Lukey Lewis, a couple of other guys were um, playing for New South Wales during that series. Yeah. The, the eight in a row, sorry, dynasty. Mm. And uh, he was adamant they weren't fans of the Queensland boys. So when they had to go on Australian camp, it was very prickly. Um, there were some guys, it was basically Hainsey, Gal. Do you know why? Luke Lewis and, and what made the Australian song? Yeah. yeah. They sing they sung the fucking Queensland song. Yeah. So here's my question for that. Um, you were at the start of the dynasty. You went at you were, you were sort yeah. of at the back end. Did you I always felt like you had good relationships with Great. the Queensland players? Um, so Chalk brought up that situation. Then he also Josh Reynolds brought up a story with Chalk that we had a real bad run in when Desi left and went to the Bulldogs from Manly. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of animosity towards Bulldog players and um, Chalk wouldn't shake. Of Grub's hand when he first came in to New South Wales camp because he was that off him in 2014. Oh, really? That's weird. Grub just told a story on on uh, on his on a podcast recently. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that and that is. just sums up Chalky. Yeah, well, he's just solid. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been through a lot of shit like on the on the field and and on off the field, but like there was never any like I'd never take that energy into camp. Right? Mm. It was never like even like going on kangaroo tours. Uh, you know, even at the start of our, our little run in 2002, 3, 4, 5, and then losing 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, like coming into Australian camp, there was none of that. How but many, How many the thing, series did you win in a row though for New South Wales? We won three. Them? Okay. And we won it on the fourth yep. and then we just – we lost it and then lost eight in a row. Okay. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, anyway, so <clears throat> like you'd go into Queensland and Australian, like Australian camp and it was like there was there was nothing like that because Lockie was the captain. Mm. And Betsy, and these guys are pretty low key guys. And they're like, you had Petro, you had Webkey, everyone was just fucking great people, right? Yeah. We're still all great friends now. They never fucking tried to sing the uh, the Queensland song ever in or in uh, in Test football. Yeah. So if you if he if someone had done that, yeah, that was that was that would uh, that would have really split the room up, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I wasn't involved in that, right? Mm-hmm. So I can understand. I think it was about 2013, right? Because I think Lockie and that have retired and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. Cam Smith's the captain, JT Cooper Cronk. You got all these dominant Queensland Quick GI. Question. In your time, it was more of a split 50 50, yeah, 60 40. Yeah, it was. By that time, it was yeah, like it was a like, 30, yeah, you only 80, had 20. Gal, Hainsey, Chockey, and Birdie. That's yeah. off the top of the head, yeah. right? And that, was always, man squad. that was always in the squad. Yeah. All the rest of fucking Queensland. Yeah. You probably had six or seven uh, New South Wales guys yeah. Sorry, in the 17. Continue, continue. Even in the 17. Yeah. So, like, we just had uh, guys like Lockie and that were just great people. Like, mm-hmm. he'd never ever do that. But I'm like, if Lockie started singing that fucking Queensland song, mm-hmm. Like I don't know how I'd react, but he would just—it would just never happen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I understand the the divide there, right? Mm. It didn't. Still doesn't make. So they still never lost. You know, even mm. though they, they they never lost, they right. never lost. Even like they had that little bit of a divide, and they'd come into camp and all that sort of shit. But like there was never any bad blood between. Queensland and New South Wales when we got into the Australian team. In your time. Yeah, never. Yeah, I think it, it was, was there was definitely bad blood later fucking on. Fucking oath there was. Yeah. I was still playing, but I wasn't in the rep scene, yeah. right? I was yeah. just like, that was my Newcastle tenure. And I was just like, I fuck, hear these rumors said, get fucked. I yeah. went to spoke to Gal or uh, Birdie. I gotta stop that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like me and Betsy and all these sort of senior players, we've already gone. Chalky wasn't having it. Oh, bro. Time. And then yeah, that's a that's a wild unit yeah. there. <laughs> that's a wild unit, Chalky, Birdie, yeah. and fucking Gal. Yeah. Bro, those yeah. three alone would yeah. take everyone out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. So there you go. Um, some good rivalries. 
Um, but it would be different if the, if we had to talk about those World Cups if they had lost. Yeah. Then, yeah, then, yeah. Then, then everyone would have been talking about that divide a lot more. For sure. And they kept fucking winning because that fucking team just rolls on, man. Yeah. Apart from last year, 30 nil. <laughs> <laughs> Up the Kiwis. Um, all right. I've got something different for this week, mate. We'll go through the team list. I haven't done my any try time try scorers this week, but I've got some Sonya for you. I've got some Sonya data, some, right? Give me some Sonya. So you're going to pick the uh, any time try scorers based off some information that I've got right. uh, to help our punters out a little bit more responsibly, of course. Of course. But I'll kick it off with my uh, levels punter. Club bet of the week. This week I'm going in the Roosters Bulldogs game, Mace. I think this is going to be a close one. I've got either mm. team to win under six and a half right. and James Tedesco to score in the first 60 minutes oh, for nine dollars from our traders with a max bet of twenty-five dollars. Okay. Right. So uh, I think it's going to be a close one. Some big outs for both teams. And I think Teddy's going to be fired up for this one, like I thought he was going to be fired up before he was inserted back into the team. Uh, last origin. All right, let's kick it off. We have the Dolphins versus the Storm Friday night at 8 p.m. at Suncorp Stadium. The Dolphins. Uh, for the Dolphins, Trey Fuller again steps in at fullback while Jesse Bromwich returns from a rib injury. Mid season recruit Tavita Pangai Jr. makes his club debut. Ah, straight in. As for the Storm, Ryan, Happen- Ryan Pappenhausen returns for Sua Falongo. Uh, he shifts to the wing. Will Warbrick is also back. So Grant Anderson moves to the centers. Dean Yeremia drops back to the reserves after his first game back from extended uh, timeout with that ACL injury. Mm. Uh, Bronson Garlic is the hooker for Harry Grant, and Trent Liero will play at lock once he's released from Queensland camp on Jeez. Friday. So let me give you the Sonia. All right. Uh, with our friends at the tab, Dolphins are $2.45 underdogs at home. Uh, $1.55 about the Storm. The line is five and a half. And for the Dolphins, they score 40% of their tries on the left. Uh, no, that's conceded. Sorry. Let's go to try scored. Dolphins have got basically a split. They, they're, they're pretty even. 38% on the left, 34% on the right. Uh, the Storm, uh, which actually, this is the best way to do it. Which team are you going to go first? I think Harry Grant's very important. I just think the Dolphins, I can't. Fucking back against the Dolphins these you days. You like the Dolphins? But they don't have Hammer. Okay. Right? Yep. Trey Fuller's been good. But Trey Fuller's been good. Like, that's, a, that's the only person that's missing, right, is Hammer. And, oh, geez, yeah. Kafusi as well. Kafusi. But you and Aiken, they've got some – yeah, they're just Katoa's tough. still there. Jerry Marshall King's still there. I, I, like, I, like, still there. I like the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm with you. I do. Because Harry Grant is so important to that team and still no Munster. And, you know, they've got Pappy back, but, like, what sort of Pappenhausen will be back? Yep. Like I think it, it'll take him two or three weeks to get back to where he was. Yep. It's great to see him back anyway. Their centers, they're pretty – they're fucking still good. It's hard to back against Melbourne, but I'm going to back against you. Sorry. Okay. So Melbourne concede fifth, nearly 49%, nearly 50% of their uh, tries on the right-hand side, which should be uh, – Is that the Nick Meaney side? That's a Nick Meaney, Shit. Will Warbrick side, which would be – lately it's been Herbie Farnworth on the left with Jack Bostock. Do you like either of those guys? Or yeah, the back row like would Herbie. be Connolly Lemuel. No, it could would be Kenny Bromwich. I like Herbie Farnworth. Herbie Farnworth? He's, All right. he's very impressive. He's just coming – he's just better and better every week. Which he's been back six weeks, I reckon. It's yeah. been six weeks and he's been yeah. dominating the last he's been, three. He's been running for almost um, 200 yeah. metres uh, the last couple of weeks. I can see, a, I can see a world where Connie, Connolly Lemuelu was just – I think Connolly's been playing on the, on the right though okay. of late. I don't know if you he, – he's very versatile. Kenny's yeah. – Kenny's, so You and Atkin likes playing on the right as well. Yeah, they, they mix and match. It's very hard to pick the back roles for them because they swap a lot. Remember at the start of the year too, Herbie was playing on the right to begin with. Mm. He's now flick, flicked back to his preferred edge on the left. left. Ever realized now on the right. It's good. Um, so we're on Herbie? I'm on Herbie. All right, let's do it. I'm going to back you on all of these twos and, uh, and right. then we'll do that moving forward. Um, all right, the, the first game on Saturday is the Titans versus the Warriors. Uh, Saturday, 3 p.m. at Seabus Super Stadium. Uh, David Fafita returns after missing round 15. Therefore, Kenan Palacia will start a prop for Big Mo. Cleese Haas will miss this game due to injury. Joe Stimson and Isaac Fasua Malaawi are the new faces on the bench. For the Warriors, RTS is back. Rogers back. Uh, he returns uh, from a hammy in, uh, injury in the centers. And Ed Cossey comes into the side for Dallin Watson and Lesniak uh, with the suspension. What was RTS 18th man last week? Sorry, uh, sorry dude. Webster said he was very close. Um, he basically was rewarding, in my opinion, rewarding Rocco Berry and Adam Pompey. Okay. Um, Rocco Berry picked up an injury in that game, so, so straight Rogers swap. I think we'll see Rog on the left, Pompey to the right. 
Um, I'm not 100% on that. I, I, I think, think Pompey's a better uh, right centre. Yeah. And okay. he's been going all right, I think. Yeah, Pompey's been going really good. I'm going. Wait, let me just sorry, finish off give quickly. Me the data, just for sorry, everyone at home. Yep. Uh, Kurt Capewell um, is in the team. So, therefore, Mitch Barnett. Uh, is also there, and yeah. uh, there's a chance that Mitch Mar- Barnett may may play now with the Liam Martin injury. Um, so Liam Martin's fifty fifty. So Dylan Walker moves to the second row. Really? Sorry, is that breaking news or what? Is that just been? Uh, it the, was reported yesterday. I can start big Hamole or what on the right side and leave what would Barnett. You do? I'd, I'd start I'd, big. I'd, I'd start Olakuatu. I'd start Barnett. Still. Yeah, I'd leave Olakuatu. I just think because Barnett can play middle, left, and right. I think so, he's a bit more versatile and okay. he can impact. And Ola Kawatu, you just sit him on that right side. I think get him the front load, 25, 30 minutes, and then nuts, don't worry about nuts. anything else. Yep. Okay. Then you know, that, that'd, be my, that'd be mine. All right. Uh, yeah. As for the Warriors, though, so with those changes, Dylan Walker moves to the second row. Tohu Harris starts at lock. I reckon Dylan Walker will play middle and Tohu Harris mm. will play edge. Uh, Tom Arler and Jacob Laban, your boy Jacob Laban, uh, join the bench. Like him. And, and Rocco Berry is the guy that misses out yeah, for okay. uh, RTS returning. Um, the Oh, let me go back here quickly. Uh, Gold Coast are two dollar fifty underdogs. The Warriors are a dollar fifty three. Who are you going, mate? Warriors, because they're away from home. Okay. Oh yeah, you like that. <laughs> yeah. You prefer them away from oh, home. Now I do. I think they're used to it. All right. So tries conceded for the Titans. Uh, pretty even. Thirty eight percent on the left. Thirty three percent in the middle. Thirty percent on the right. As for the Wars, they score forty three percent of their tries on the right side. So that is. Uh, Edward Cossey territory. Um, we think Pompey will go to the right, and that's obviously um, Murata near quarter and Sean Johnson's side. Jaden Campbell, where's he defend? Jaden Campbell defends left, that yeah. side. Yes. So the right side for the Warriors will score a lot of tries down Ooh, there. You like that, yeah. Yeah, so I that's think that they've got some really good defensive centers. Philip Sammy's a good, but I think he's more of a winger. Mm-hmm. Brian Kelly's one of the best defensive centers in the game. So if he's is he near is he near Jaden Campbell? Brian, so you've got Brian Kelly. Jaden Campbell and David Fafita defending next to each other. Yeah, I think they'll get some joy there. Yeah. Yeah. The right side, I think. Um, so your options are. Nick Corey. We think they're going to be. Yeah, you like Nick Corey? Fuck yeah. Yeah, I was going He's been a dog for I'm, the last three weeks. They've really missed him. He runs beautiful lines on that right edge. Yeah, I, like I think it. I see a world with a double lead and they hit him pretty early. Yep. You know, they'll go around the back a couple of times and then they'll get him. I reckon he'll get. Late in the halves, okay. he'll, get, he'll get a try. I like it. $2.90 yeah. with the tap yeah. uh, for near quarter. I'm going to back you on all of these, all right? Because I think, just say he runs – every time he runs those lines, if they square up just a little bit later, he's fucking through. Mm. He Because he's he thinks he's getting the ball. That is a, he runs the perfect decoys, right? Because you, you have to account for him. He runs to run through people. Yeah, he wants the ball. So yeah. you give it to him. He nearly scores all the time. Yeah. He yeah, runs he that perfect line at the three man. He gets an out ball sometimes or he breaks real late. Yep. you got to account for him. Jaden Campbell's right there. They'll big be target. at him and David Fafita, they'll be fucking under the pump big time. I agree. I agree. So I think Nia Cora's our man. And I could easily go a, a, a clock stat Yep. because I think he's going to get that try because yep. he always come into those guys. True. And Jaden Campbell, always, he'll always come into his league because you've got to protect your fucking inside yep. shoulder, right? So he'll bite on Nia Cora. And I think – Clockstad will get a couple of tries out the back and all that right side winger, Dallin. Yeah. No, Dallin's injured in this game. So if, the right if, side, if, if it's give. a swap for swap, it should be Edward Cossey on the right. Just catch it, put it yeah. down. All right. Um, we'll stick with near quarter though. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, That's 100. our first yeah. uh, first choice. All right. Roosters versus Bulldogs, Saturday, 5.30 p.m. at Gosford. Gosford Stadium, this one. Um, for the Roosters, Lindsay Collins, Angus Crichton, Spencer Lenu, Connor Watson, all on origin duties. Therefore, Dong Young returns from a hamstring injury. Uh, he'll return on the wing, which pushes uh, Junior Pongo into the centres, while Jared Uri Hargraves, Cheese and Terrell May make up the new front row. Nat Butcher joins the starting side in the back row, while Blake Steep, Satili Tupanua and Siwa Wong are all the new faces on the bench. As for the Bulldogs, Karaz shifts to the centres to replace Skipper Critter. Uh, Jarrell Skelton will come in for his first game of the year. Josh Curran returns from HIA. Heaps of changes for these teams. Um, Jacob Preston is sideline again with a foot yeah. injury. It's not as bad as you think. Okay, good. Uh, Jake, Turp- Jake Turpin and Puasa Farmasuli join the bench with Kurt Mann out. Viliami Kickout is in the listed on the reserves extended bench. Mm. So hopefully uh, Kicks can return from that finger said, surgery yeah, yeah, that he just had bad, recently. Man. Don't underrate a finger injury either. Yeah, Have man. you had one? Yeah, they're awful. His is um, on his right side, right? So I think it's. One of these fingers, but this one's already yeah. But you this can one, have them here because you can tape up. Yeah, but this one's when you have them but there. But that one is already fucked. The yeah. middle one, right? Yeah. So he can't he can't bundy him together. Yeah. 
That's a problem. That's the hardest part. That's a problem. Yeah. You got to keep them together because the other one is bent. I was having a look at his hands the other day. I was just like, damn. And operation, everything. It's just he's still he's getting through training. He's doing a lot of miles on his legs. But um, you know, when you're a left arm carry, right arm, right arm jousting stick, um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard. But uh, hopefully, he's back in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if he's back this week. Preston's yeah. not as bad either. I think Presto, he thought that he broke his leg. I said, you're carrying on a bit, mate. Yeah, it looked awful. No, it did. <laughs> and he did. goes, he goes, and he's as tough as they And come. he goes, I carried on, mate. So I said, no, you didn't. I thought you were fucking broken as well. Um, probably another couple of weeks away, but. All right, you're obviously going on the, do- the I'm going dogs. The dogs. I just, right. I'm just trying to figure out where, because they're a fucking good defensive unit, right? I'll give it to you. Here we go. The Bulldogs score basically a split left and right, 42% mm. on the left, 49% on the right. So either side is available for us right now. Yep. As for the Roosters, they concede 49%, so almost 50% of their tries on their right side, yep. which is which is Dom Young's side. So you'll be looking at um, Bronson Sherry, and if Blake Wilson, I think if they move Blake, do you reckon Blake Wilson or Jarrell Skelton will play left? In your opinion, and then also it brings in um, potentially Mudders Current as well. Yeah, I like Mudders Current on that left edge. He's been playing good. He's mm. not Mudders anymore. Nah, he's, he's lost man. ten kilos yeah, from last week. Oh, last little, week, <laughs> last year he's on Ozempic, whatever. Yeah, he looks good. Uh, I, I like a, a world where Burton just sort of gets that short side, little dummy left foot, right Ooh. palm fucking try. Oh, Birdo. Yeah. All right, Birdo is Love paying $3.50 yeah. anytime try score. I think he's going to like, I think he'll be pissed off and just play with that attitude. Yeah, I like that. I just think that if he, if he and he needs to for us to have a fucking near chance to beat yeah. the Roosters. Even They're going to be up the- for this fucking game. Dom Young had probably his worst game of his career against us last time. He did too. Yeah, and yeah. we pumped him. We had him like fucking, what, 22 nil, or some shit like that. For sure they're going to be up for this And game. they'll be up. Regardless yeah. of like players that are out, there's a rivalry there that stems back from when I was playing and it's just – it's going to be on. And the Teddy pissed off factor yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And everyone's going to be backing him. You still got Sam Walker and Luke Keery, Hargraves, Terrell May, Butcher, Radley, White. Still Come on, good bro. Team, isn't it? You st- and you still got that bad man, Joseph Manu. Yeah. He's a bad man, yeah, Joe he's a Manu. bad man. Uh, the last, Mace, the last game on Super Saturday, uh, we have the Rabbitohs against the Seagulls. Um, again, a number of outs for both teams. Uh, kicking it off, dry grey. Makes his return from an ankle injury. Obviously. That's good. I thought he's going to be out for a while. Yeah. That looked bad. It did look bad. Yeah. Good on um, you. No Luttrell. He goes straight to fullback with Cam Murray on origin duty. Uh, back rower, Liam LeBlanc. Liam LeBlanc uh, joins the 17 for nice. uh, his NRL debut. Jai Arrow has been named, but he looked like he suffered a shoulder injury at the back end of that game on the uh, the second Mariner try. Yeah. Uh, as for the Seagulls, no Chez, no Jakey, no Humole. Uh, also... Uh, they had a couple Surely. of injuries as well with Paseca and Ruben Garrick. So, Carl Lawton is at halfback and Nathan Brown and Corey Waddell uh, start in the front row yeah. and back row respectively. And then a whole heap of youngsters coming into the team. Yeah. But the biggest news is Nathan Brown and Luke Brooks will co-captain oh, the how good. in their first year. So, um, Well done. Where are you going on this one, mate? Very hard to pick this game. Yeah, it is. But I just think Chez runs that team. Mm. He runs it, and Cody I look at still Cody Walker and Jack Whiten. Yeah, I look at those two guys, and I don't know, Moale, Kepe, Kepi, Damian Cook's been playing outstanding. Kaloa Matungi, you still got these boys. If Jai Arrow doesn't play, they can fill in that sort of spot. But he'll be a big loss. Cheekham, I think um, Souths have too much quality. Okay, so Tab have Souths at a dollar forty-seven. Um, the line is six and a half. Do you think it's going to be more than a try? I think so. And let's go to the try scorers. I'll give you the Sonia for this game as mm. well. So for South Sydney, you'd think it's left. It is heavily left. Fifty-seven percent of their tries on the left, despite probably a more balanced yeah. team of late as well. And as for the Manly, very even split. So um, 40% on the left, 42% on the right. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to attack that left edge. Mm. You have Jack Whiten. Um, I think Tane Milne's been playing left with Alex Johnston. Those are your options. As yeah. for the back row, it's been Chi from memory that's been playing. No. Yeah, he's been everywhere. No, it was Dry Arrow playing yeah. left. It's Dry Arrow playing left. And then obviously you throw in Cody Walker as well. Yeah, I just – do you see, like any of those? I, li- I like it. I just I can't I can't go past Jack White, and I just think with when the game when you've lost a, a, a like an edge player like a Chez, and you put someone else in there, mm. wherever Carl Lawton is, I think they're going to really go at. Mm. He's so a really I'm good not front sure on where defender. he is. 
But I think him and Cody and Jack are probably going to have a try each. Well, you think um, Carl Lawton would play right because Luke Brooks plays left every week. So he'll stay. They well, then he's going to be on Jack. Yep. And I think Jack's going to have a, f- a fucking fair crack at this. Okay. I think he's been playing like well. That. He's big. He's strong. Like, And when if you don't get your numbers right, mm. you're done because yeah. he will attack everything. Like especially if you get it right just off the other post, like just, just left of the like that numbers line, mm. like and Jack just sits there and you're like, you shit yourself because he's a runner. Even if he gets four and four, he's probably going to yeah, take it. Yeah, he'll take it. Mm. He'll take it. You know, so I think um, Jack White will probably play one of his best games this year. All right, we're on Jack White then. Yeah. All right, done. Uh, the last game, West Tigers versus Raiders, Sunday, 4 p.m. at Campbelltown Ooh. Sports Stadium. Lockie Galvin returns from a hand injury, a so Aiden Caesar moves to halfback. Upper Coruscant goes back to hooker, telling De Silva to the bench. After making his comeback from a knee re- reconstruction and just getting upgraded as well, extended. De Silva? Do he? Uh, oh, do he will uh, probably play his first game of the year. Uh, Kit Lau Lili will make his first gra- uh, first game of the season off the bench after making his debut in round 27 Lau last Lili, year. Yeah. As for the Raiders, just one change. Zach Wolford joins the bench in place of Tom Starling. Um, the tab pump. have the Tigers, a $2.35 underdogs. <sighs> Canberra, $1.60 favorites. Which way are you going on this one, mate? Canberra. Canberra? They can't. They can't perform like that two weeks in a row. I they always have a bounce back. Ricky Stewart, yeah. This is the bounce back game. I think um, Hudson Young will be pissed off his game last week. Yep. Filthy and he's not in origin and I think he'll get – Yeah, I think he's the one who's going to break it open okay. on that left edge. I don't care who the defenders are. I think okay, sweet. Well, uh, so Raiders, 38% of their tries on the left, mm. 43 on the right, so fairly balanced. Mm. As for the Tigers – Again, they're pretty balanced either side, 36 and 42%. So no cl- no clear weaknesses. So you, you want to so back Caesar, Young? Caesar or Galvin's going to get spotted up massive. Where, whoever, wherever they're defending, I don't care. I think uh, – Caesar on the right will I be think, on Hudson Young. So Huddy Young will be um, spotting, him up, spotting him up big time. A yep. little tip-tip through the middle and just like Huddy Young could be off a kick, could be off a little short ball. Like he just runs really good lines. And I think he's going to be angry, man. It's like he would he, – the person of his talent and what he dished out last week, he'd be filthy at. He's got uh, obviously standards for himself and he'll be like, oh, I'm fucking way better than that and the Tigers are going to feel it. He scores in multiple ways. And he does he? He score. Yeah. He's paying $2.60 at the tab. So um, I'll put that together. And I like a middle I like a middle too. I like a big Joey Joey Taps. You like uh, – just this is the first time you've ever done your anytime yeah, try I just like, Yeah, I just like – they're always an option. If you've got good ball players, the back rowers run such good lines these days. You hit them like they fucking score. All your tries are through physicality. Yeah. Those, that's how you want to score all your tries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you, you want people to run There's over no someone. There's no fucking out the back, out the back tip to a- yeah. Alex Johnson. We I haven't know gone, he's going to score. We haven't gone pretty anytime try scorers. Nah. You have gone through <laughs> the front grit. door. This kick the cunt down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, I think that's it, that's mate. That's it, mate. As always, what are you really game with? And free and confidential support. Call 1-800-858-858. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back on Monday with the Same great Monday. and powerful Mitchie Pierce to break yes. down Origin 2.